So when you want to have the yeah, more than biryani. Yes. This is where you should come. Yes, I will personally suggest to come here ah. because the experience of having the Chennai style biryani amongst the local, I think it gets fulfilled here. All right, so you got to come in early so that you beat the hustle and bustle of the place. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't know from whose plate you are eating. It will be so crowded. <laughs>
बहुत खुशी हुई आपसे मिलकर वेल वी गॉट आर टोकन द चिकन सिक्सटी फाइव इज कॉल्ड चिकन पकौड़ा टू फिफ्टी ग्राम इज वन फोर्टी टू द मटन बिरयानी इज टू नाइन्टी फाइव हाफ पोर्शन अ चिकन बिरयानी हाफ पोर्शन इज टू हंड्रेड एंड द चुक्का इज टू थर्टी एट सो वी गॉट आर बिरयानीज एंड दिक्सटी फाइव एंड द चुक्का सॉटेड फॉर अदर्ट सो प्रिंसली सम ऑफ नाइन ट्वेंटी थ्री रुपीज This is going to be interesting because uh, there are no tables here. Oh, that's what chicken sixty five, huh? Ah, chicken pakora. Chicken pakora, same, ah, sixty five pakora, same, erka. Boneless angie. Ah, restaurant boneless. So if you come here, you eat it with the bone, but I think the bone has more flavor, right? I don't think I've ever been handed a biryani through a window, but like I said, it's always the first time. Oh, that's a mutton biryani. What a come? Sixty bang wangi ya. Pass la sabda. Sabda. Mutton ya the, chicken ya the. Chicken mutton. Little chicken and the mutton. थैंक यू इधो चिकन बिरयानी फैंटेस्टिक मटन बिरयानी एंड द चुक्का Well, we found ourselves a tiny alcove here where we're going to attempt to taste the biryani. Yeah. We have the chicken, of course, and uh, we have the mutton biryani. I think there's a fair bit of the chili that goes into the yes, red chili powder that goes into stain the. And then we have the chukka. Have you tried this before? Mutton chukka, I haven't. Mutton chukka, you haven't. Last but not the least, we have the chicken pakoda. Chicken pakoda. The buckets basically kept here, and you help yourself to that. You know what's nice is that the rice, even to the touch, feels very light, and also it's a sort where every grain, every grain of the rice is separate. Mm. And hits home on the flavor department. I can probably taste a bit of the flavor of the cloves in this, and I think there's plenty of the. The curry that goes into this biryani. Yeah, the Chennai style has a yeah. good amount of tomatoes going. So that's interesting because even the Amur biryani uses the curry, but it's yeah. very in a paste form. Yeah. Right. Please go for yeah. it. You know, for me, I like to experiment. I like to taste the rice first. Now that's really where you'll find the flavour. Mm. You see, it's slivers of the tomato that perhaps were rather plump when they went into that biryani thing. So this is a biryani thing where the meat, it's a pakki akni. So the yeah. meat is cooked. Yeah, and then the rice is then, then the rice added, is added to the gravy. Break the meat. Yeah, yeah. So the meat is literally the sort yeah, that so that falls off the bone. That certainly is a biryani that's banging in its flavors. You know, ideally, if I were to let's say come here and I'm not filming, I would probably take the biryani plate after plate from that window. <laughs> but because we needed to corner this space so that we could shoot, we taken all the food together. But this is a biryani that you should have when it's hot. Typically, when they close the biryani, they for dum, they also add a bit of the ghee on top. So that ghee is still in a molten state when it's hot. Even after breaking the dum, they add a little bit of ghee on mm. top. So that's why it's, you can find it to be wet and not dry. I love this biryani. And you're very right about this yam or dal, uh. where I prefer to have here as soon as you get. Uh. Takeaways, I've always had a little bit of not so good experience, but when you have it here, hot, it's really nice. I think when you take a biryani away, you need to basically bring it back to that state yeah. where the fat is still molten. Yeah. Well, out here you're literally rubbing shoulders with the person next to you. Yeah. This is what I said. You wouldn't know whose plate you're eating from. So, if you want to sit, there's also a restaurant right opposite. But I wanted to get a sense of what it was like to eat. The Chennai biryani street style. Mm. 
Somebody said number one in Amagate. Number one in Amagate. So good. I'm finding it difficult to let go of that plate. Yes, Manu is pulling that plate away from me. So we can go to the mutton biryani. Saying that we should go to the mutton biryani. But I think I'm just going to break things with the chicken pakoda. I like the chicken pakoda even though it's bone and I kind of prefer their style of the masalas. Mm. The masala is very flavorful. Mm. Nicely seasoned and I like those uh, crispened edges. Mm. Quite nice. Look, it's got the cornstarch that helps make yeah. it crisp. It's nice and crisp on the outside and uh, quite moist on the inside. You know, when you eat a pakoda, you're supposed to eat it as soon as it comes off the oil. Notwithstanding that, it still manages to hold on to some semblance of moistness. And now, for some of that mutton, they're very generous with the meat. Huh? I think there's about four or five pieces or six pieces of meat. Actually, there's more meat more than meat. the rice. There'll be more inside. Really? And there's an egg. So, is this how they began? So, it says, it's in written in Tamil, Abu Bakr, Miran, Umar. So these oh. three people. Since 1996. So this probably traces the beginning of the Yamoidin biryani. So they began out of a cart. Yes. What do you yeah, call a cart in? Uh, Talwandi. Talwandi. So they began out of a Talwandi. Yeah. Fantastic. What I'm really a big fan of is the fact that the rice still feels much more hotter than warm to the touch, despite the fact that it's been sitting there for a few minutes. This tells you that the biryani aunty is fresh. It's just come off the stove yeah. wherever they make it. So they don't make the biryani here. They, no, they have a centralized... Uh, they have a centralized kitchen. Mm. You know, in the chicken biryani, I could taste mm. very much the flavor of the hard spices, be it the patta or the cloves. But out here, all that flavor is subdued. It's more the flavor of a little bit of the fat. Yes. I was just through. trying to show you there is a piece of fat here. And I think it's that fat that basically coats that rice. Yeah. And also when the biryani is cooking on dam, cooking over a slow fire, as the vapors rise through that deg, it carries with it not just the masala, not just the flavor of the spices, but also the character of the fat. Because Absolutely. the fat tends to break down into that masala and that then gets carried up by the steam and that then permeates every grain of the rice. In the case of the chicken, it doesn't have the luxury of that fat to coat Very true. that rice. Enough with the poetry, let's get down to the rice. Mm. Really nice. I'm also tasting more of the character of the tomato that's coming through. Let's now go for some of the meat. So I've got a nalli. Mm. Oh, look at that. All of it. That meat is sheathed in a bit of the fat. See, fat, meat, and then mm. bone, bone marrow. I'm also going to help myself to a little bit of that piece of meat that was held together by the nalli. Mm. Very nice. The sort of biryani where you want that meat and the rice to go together. You can see the glisten of some fat. Should we now try it with some... Brinjo? Hmm? I'm gonna try it now with some of that katrikai. Hmm. This is a cook it in a... Nalla in it? Nalla in it, correct. Ah, and there is and also the ginger oil. Amount of uh, sesame that goes in it. So that's the flavour that you're tasting, yeah. both in the oil and also the sesame that goes in. So olden days it was tamarind that was the souring agent. I'm sure there's some tamarind in this too. Nowadays they use yeah. vinegar. They don't use tamarind in this? They use but then they finish it with vinegar mm. because it stays good for a longer time. As well as as it gets reheated, it gets little stronger. More yeah. So what the katrikai chops or the katrikai pachudi also does is that as you're tasting the biryani, your mouth is also getting coated, especially in the case of the mutton, with the fat. And when you have the acidity of that katarikai, along with the sourness that comes from the tamarind or perhaps even some vinegar as we've just learned, that helps refresh your palate. Absolutely. So you dive back into that mutton biryani with a fresh palate. Yeah, it's just a palate cleanser for yeah. you when you're having the... 
Mm. There's another piece of meat here. Mm. This is a chop, a tad tougher as opposed to the piece of meat that is holding onto the nalli. Mm. They're all chewing on the meat. So I suspect the animal that they use here to make this is probably not totally young. Yeah. Given the scale of the operation, they probably have their own butchery and. Yes. Huh? Just because they are they run franchise, the amount of biryani that's cooked in their factory. Mm. Because not only for their consumption or for their sale, they also send it out to their franchises. I'm keeping Shabnam busy in replying to me so that I can save a more of biryani. <laughs> Please have some. Yeah. I think next, some of the mutton chokka. You know, but the mutton chokka looks quite um, robust in that onion based masala. So I'm a little worried that once I taste the mutton chokka, I may perhaps lose out the subtle flavors of the biryani. I like the manner in which people are just standing quietly, diligently in a line, savoring that biryani. Uh, Not a sound. Everybody's just busy eating. That's right. I mean, this biryani, if you don't have too big an appetite, this one mutton biryani can actually serve you two people yeah. with perhaps a side of the chicken pakoda or yeah. that mutton chukka. It's again got that fat part of uh, mutton. There is fat in the mutton pieces, so kinds of. Thank you. Welcome. So a chukka is basically like a semi gravy. Yeah. A fry is more or less dry. Barival? Is fried. Fried. So even see, there is a the mm. fat. You know what's very nice here, as I'm tasting this mutton chukka, is the sweetness of the onion that shines through. So I'm tasting also the robust flavors of that masala, of that garam masala, that spice mix. But holding on to that is the sweetness of the roasted onions, the roasted vengayam. It gives a nice sweet character to the Very good. Spice. It's almost, in fact, the onions are almost yeah. marmalade in their flavours. It's not as jammy as that in the texture, but on the flavour count, certainly so. Some more biryani? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Really? Yeah. So in all the Yam Oedins that you've tried, I'm yeah. sure you've tried many, but which outlet would you recommend to our viewers? Original, this outlet of Pallavara. Okay. Otherwise, if you want a restaurant style, then they have a bigger outlet in the main road, near uh, airport road. I'm enjoying this biryani. If we can come and eat like this, nothing like it. The yeah. experience is really, really good. And also I think what happens is, from their kitchen where they cook it over a wood fire, it comes directly here. There's a lot of volume here, many people coming here. So I think the biryani that you will find here will always be very hot. Yeah. So therefore I think you will taste the biryani in its prime. And I suspect that's the reason also why I find many people out here. And it's also the secret is that when you cook in bulk, mm. the taste actually enhances in biryani. Cooking 5 kgs and f cooking 15 kgs is a lot of difference. Yeah. So when you cook in bulk, the fat, the more the fat comes, more the meat, rice ratio, the taste totally. That's why the wedding biryanis are always yeah. uh, exclusive. I was just going to say that. That's why the shadi biryani yeah. is always something to look forward to. The chicken biryani is also quite nice. You can definitely feel, taste the flavours of the masala, yes. the spices. And if you're a mutton lover, well, there's uh, it's a no-brainer. This is yeah. what you need to have. And both the chukka and that pakoda, two other sort that make for interesting sides. But just ensure that you have a big enough appetite because just this biryani itself is a sort that will keep you sated at least for three or four hours. Absolutely, uh -huh. I, I, I can never finish one biryani. Mm. I always come with a friend and order one and we share. Mm. Got marrow? I think she missed it. <laughs> no, I, I'm glad you had. Because I can come to Yamudin whenever I want to. That's right. That's why I'm taking the liberty to be unchivalrous. Even as I <laughs> focus all my attention more on the biryani and less on her. That pachadi I have not tasted yet. Good quality cut, thick, and then the onions of course. So I think if you want to savour some original Chennai biryani, the biryani that 
made the city fall in love with the dish, definitely find your way to Yamoedin. And if you want to taste where it all began, the Tallavandi or the push cart is no longer there, but you will find this shop here in Pallavaram. So until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!